Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and how do you become the CFO of your own financial life? We'll ask a woman who's all systems and processes. She's the mind behind the Military Money Podcast, Lacey Langford. Plus, he's got a Plutus Award, so you know he knows how to game the system. It's Len Penzo. And, of course, the guy who had to design a system because he owns his own company, Industry Insider OG. But that's not all. Halfway through the show, we'll continue our year-long battle between our contributors with my striking trivia questions. And now, a guy who uses toilet time to binge watch TV shows on his phone. That's a heck of a system. It's Joe Salcihi. All right, that one might be a bridge too far, Doug. That might be just a little bit beyond what people want to do. Imagine. On their phone. (laughs) Hey everybody, welcome to the number two podcast, humor podcast. in America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joe Salci, I average Joe money on Twitter and happy Labor Day weekend to all of you. You made it the unofficial end of summer today, the official beginning wah, of wah, fall, wah. we're back to school, back to work, back to, back to everything. And Life we got a, to, Joe's just full of sunshine and rainbows today, isn't he? Isn't he? That guy singing the the man who refused to smile and wave at the camera when when uh, Doug announced him, Mister OG's here. Sorry, I like I, how you were just stoic, man. Just stoic. It's just in the zone for today's topic. He always- so ready. <laughs> the guy who's ready, deep under Los Angeles, Len Penzo is here. Yes, and I'm glad summer's almost over. Let me tell you, it's hot. <laughs> it's, it's- Yes, because and I know my attire is, uh, you know, it's really got uh, OG and uh, Doug uh, excited today with the uh, sleeveless look. So, uh, yeah, well, you eat your heart for, out, boys. For, for people not watching on YouTube, you're missing uh, Len's gun show. Len's got a gun show going on. <laughs> and uh, Doug, he stole your parachute. Not a high paint. caliber gun. <laughs> I knew I was waiting for that one. Those that was teed up. never seen the sun. <laughs> Also, (laughs) no, (laughs) blinded by the light. I appreciate it, Len. I thought it was for me. Thank thank you, you. Lacey. Thank you. (laughs) Checks in the mail. And the woman who's wondering why she's back already. She's like, I just left you people just a couple weeks ago. Lacey Langford is back. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I see you guys couldn't go along without me. We can't go without you. We can't. We had to have you back right away. But you know what? I thought about this topic about systems and processes, and I know your military money show system is unbelievable, but your money management system at home also, you, uh, you rely on systems. I do for a lot of things beyond money, but everything it's, I think important to make sure you reach your goals. Yes. She makes sure she has uh, cold beer at the end of each day and uh, no dark chocolate. There's a, there's a couple of staples. (laughs) <laughs> She's got Hallmark those. Channel. So for the three people that don't. <laughs> oh, no, that's not my jam. That is not my jam. Not it. Uh, Lacey's like, if it doesn't blow up, right? I beg your pardon? <laughs> doesn't blow up. Or rock. She's, she's not what. Right. Uh, tell the three people that don't know about the military money show what you do, because it's amazing. Thank you. I help the military community with everything to make, save and invest money wisely. I think it's an important part of serving to have a good financial background and understanding to build wealth and make sure you stay out of debt so you can stay focused on what's most important. Plus, getting out of the military is no joke. So having a little bit of financial knowledge under your belt before you leave is really important. So that's what the show's all about. And you can find it wherever finer podcasts are are found everywhere. Where, where the classy podcasts are. <laughs> the classy ones. Absolutely. We've got Lacey here, we've got Len, we got OG, we got Neighbor Doug. We're going to be talking about systems to better manage your money, so let's get rolling. Actually, I've got a joke to, to, can can I tell everybody a joke real quick? Oh, really? Yeah, all right, so here's how it goes. (laughs) (laughs) And now we can start the show. (laughs) 
today's piece that made me really inspired to talk about this comes to us from the Wall Street Journal. It, it was written by Julia Carpenter uh, earlier this month, and it's about uh, in marriage is needing a CFO and a COO. And I kind of laughed when I saw this OG because I thought I thought most people don't think in terms of CFO or COO, like to talk about having both of those roles in in any relationship. And we can even frankly get rid of the whole relationship piece of this and involve single people, too, because we have times when we need to be CFO and we have times we need to be COO. And I don't think we think about that enough. We think of, you know, I think we think about Netflix time. We think about spend money time. We think about got to just take the credit card out time. We don't think enough about these roles. I think it's important to also look at look at it from the perspective of the, f- the fact that you're probably good at one of those things and you're probably probably maybe not so great at, at the other one. If you have an opportunity to uh, to partner with somebody that that is kind of a yin to your yang, that's awesome. But if you don't, you got to think about how to solve that. Yeah. Yeah. You truly need to have time and attention because those two roles super important. L- l- let's talk about this, Lacey. What really is at stake here? The lack of a money management system, like in real cost. Any idea of what that might cost you? A lot of money and mistakes and going in the wrong direction. You know, if you, especially if you're in a marriage or a relationship and you don't have a common goal that you're working towards, not on the same page, you're both probably going to be doing different things, especially if you have a, like OG was saying, a different skill set, like you're better at one thing than you are the other, you're both going to be moving in different directions. So it's going to take longer to reach your financial goals, probably cost you more money and a lot more fighting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and if, if you're not in a relationship, still fighting with yourself or doubting yourself or wondering why I never have any money when everyone around you, everyone around you does. I mean, it's funny, Len, we think about some of these little decisions, right, that we make. We're like, oh, YOLO, I'll just spend a little extra today because it's Friday on whatever it might be. And if we don't have those systems in place, this can add up to some real cash. Yeah, you know, it, over the long haul of time, little, a lot of little things add up. And so you have to watch that thing. I mean, we always talk about the power of compounding and, and compound growth. Uh, yeah, if you let things go uh, a little bit, drip by drip by drip, eventually, uh, you know, you're going to feel the impacts. And it usually just creep, creeps up on you all at once. Kind of like, um, uh, what was that, uh, uh, Ernest Hemingway from uh, The Sun Also Rises? Like, how did you go bankrupt slowly at first, then all at once, right? Oh, so, yeah. right. But I mean, that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, if, if you let things go and you don't pay attention and you let bad habits continue, continue to build up, uh, you, you don't need to know it and usually until it's too late. So, yeah, very important. This is interesting for, for families that spend uh, paycheck to paycheck. And they talk about how in 2023, this is from a piece in Fortune, uh, 2023 cash poor report talking about middle class people, often with college degrees and six figure income. So this is not just people with with low income. They end up spending, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, $25 billion more in hidden junk fees. Just the cost of little junk fees, not having a cash reserve, not knowing how your money system works, has just this, this huge number. And overall, overall, when it comes to junk fees, get this number, worldwide, $415 billion in additional fees we pay because we don't pay attention to the little numbers. So, so some big things. Let's dive into this. When you think money CFO, then Lacey, what are some of the tasks? Like if I'm really taking seriously my role as CFO, some of the basic things I should do during this CFO time I'm going to set aside. Well, I think budget planning, you know, getting, setting a goal. What is the numbers? What are you trying to do? And then creating the system to make that happen because you could talk about it all day long. But if you don't have a plan of action in a way that you are able to implement, not how somebody else does something, I think is really important. And then also to monitor that. You can't just set something and forget about it. You have to have a plan of how you're going to do it, do it, and then fine tune it over time because nothing is going to stay the same. You're going to change. Your goals are going to change. 
you know, if you're single and you get married, that's going to change the plan too. So I think making sure you're monitoring it and making changes as needed is important. Len, I know that uh, that even as we talk about this piece in the Wall Street Journal, that that your family operates this way, right? You've got uh, CFO, not only CFO time, but between you and the honeybee, you guys have your own roles. Yeah, uh, and we have since 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 we got married in what uh, 1997, so a long time, 26, 27 years. I've always been what would and I've addressed it this way as the household CEO and. Uh, the honeybee has been my wife has been the CFO, the household CFO. And how we divided those duties up is um, she's responsible as the CFO for the shorter term day to day financial management and planning. And I have the task of the longer term strategic stuff. So the, the big stuff like, um, you know, retirement planning and investments um, and our, it, you know, uh, what the our emergency fund allocation should be. Um, and so and where, where she's working, making sure the bills are paid, that we have enough money in the checking account at all time, that we're that we're not falling behind on anything. And of course, we every month we we meet and, and we collaborate and we discuss both of our duties and we make sure that we're all on the same page. So but it's been and it's worked. Success, it's been great. It's worked successfully for you know 27 years. So I'm glad you define those, Len, what each person did, because I've met you. And I've met the honeybee, and I would say that she's the CFO and the CEO. If you hadn't, <laughs> if if you hadn't told me that, like what Lynn the roles CEO were. and title only, he gets to put it on his business card. <laughs> Look, is that how you ask yeah, to be it addressed? It helps him get to sleep at night. Just let him Please. have his little dreams. <laughs> so, so you know, I've I've written about this in the past. So, and I've I've got it right in front of me right now. There are seven tasks for each of us that that are defined. Do you want me to real quick? I'll, I'll read these off just their bullet points. So I yeah, don't let's dive anybody. into them. Okay. So, so for myself as a CEO, mine's identifying the future household expenditures, categorizing those expenditures as either non-discretionary or discretionary. So which ones are needs and which ones are wants, uh, developing our strategic, what I call our strategic spending plan. So our long-term spending out over the, you know, five, six year period, um, establishing the budget, you know, setting those budget limits. Uh, then I'm also ensuring that my entire family now, not so much now because my kids have grown up, but when my kids were younger, we had a family meeting and they understood what our strategic spending plan is and the budget. And they had inputs in the strategic spending plan, by the way. They did. Yeah. Sometimes kids think of things or have ideas that, you know, as a parent, you don't think of, you know, they look like they might say, Hey, I want to go. Why? I wanted to go to, you know, wherever, I don't know, Disney World or somewhere that you weren't. Yeah. I mean, most kids think of that, but I, I'm having trouble thinking of something. But is they this, come up with some neat ideas and you go, oh, that's a good Len, idea. Where you, yeah. Is this a deal, Len, where you hand Nina 10 bucks to bring it up in front of mom because you don't want to? <laughs> yeah, great. I wish, where were you when I needed you for that? No, no, that's, that's a great idea. The other two real quick are adhering to the strategic plan, making sure we adhere to the strategic plan and refining the strategic plan whenever necessary. So, and then real quick, the, as the CFO, what, uh, yes. what the wifey did, and still does, is I think I've already said it mostly. She's, she maintains our, all of our records. She maintains the spreadsheet that we track everything with. You know, she pays the bills. She balances the checkbook. She makes sure that we're not falling behind on anything. Um, and she also would make sure we're adhering to the strategic spending plan. And then she also identifies any negative financial trends that are showing up in our budget and our spending. So she'll say, hey, it looks like our electricity bill's been going up steadily for the last three months. You know, we better watch that. Things like that. So and that's that's how it works. Pretty simple, really. Yeah. And, and assuming, OG, that you're you're on board with the stuff that Len just talked about, where do you really start there? Because Len's got this great system, right, of roles and responsibilities. But if I'm just starting out and I just heard everything Len said, I'm like, oh, that's a lot. I don't know how to implement that. Like, where do we where do we begin? I think the big or the, the first place to start has got to be just in a conversation about money. It's it's you know, let's let's be all on the same page around where you know, where are we today and what are the facts going on? And I, I think, you know, it's interesting going through this conversation with people all the time about, you know, how much money do you make? How much, you know, how much is in your 401k? How much, how much is your electricity bill? 
how much is your credit card debt? And the wide range of answers that you can get from people that are in the same household about the same question is, is, is mind boggling because like, Oh, I don't know. I think we spend, you know, 500 bucks a month on groceries and you look and you go, well, it's actually 1500. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of the same. It's like, that's not the same. Those are different numbers and neither of them are right. Right. It's not, and and to your point line about the electricity bill going up, it's not like you're going to run around and, you know, jack the AC, you know, up to 80 and turn all the lights off and all that sort of, you're just going to go, okay, this affects other things. It's not, we're, we're not, we're not being punitive in the analysis. It's not like, oh my gosh, the electricity bill's higher. We have to do all this catastrophic stuff. It's just, we need to be aware of it so that we can adjust other areas in the, in the plan to make sure that we stay on track with the other things. That's it. But I'm surprised by that because I thought that you were going to say not where we're at today. Oh gee. I thought you were going to say it really the first conversations about where we need to, where we're going. Cause I think none of that even matters if we don't know where we're going. Well, I mean, I, I think probably uh, those two kind of sort of go hand in hand and, you know, chicken or egg type of thing in terms of, you know, begin with the end in mind and, and kind of recognize where you are. But as I as I work through financial plans with people, the way that we look at it is really clearly identifying kind of where all the bodies are buried today. Because when you have a clear understanding of where everything is now, we can start making decisions about the future. And so we we, you know, obviously it's important to be on the same page for for goal setting. And, you know, if one, one person in a relationship is like, I think we should pay for all of our kids' college expenses. And the other person is thinking paying for all of it means just the tuition and they're going to find their own housing. You know, you got to kind of flesh that stuff out and make sure that, you know, the words that we're using are the same. But at the very beginning of this process in my book, it's really, you know, how much is in your checkbook right now? I don't know. Like you, nobody knows the answer to this. Nobody knows how much credit card debt they have. They have an idea, but it's but it's a widely disparate uh, answer between between family members. Lacey, uh, you just heard Lens System. Is your system? Did you hear things that are similar to yours, or is your system vastly different? I think there are some things that are similar, some things that are different. I definitely, I think, do both of those roles. The majority of those roles in my household. But strategic planning is definitely both of us. That's, you know, a conversation that we're having about, you know, where we're at, where we want to go, how are we going to get there? And because both of us have to have buy in in that, it, you know, my, my husband's idea of where we should go might be completely different where, you know, I think we should go. It might be more boat and all of these other things versus I might be like, let's go do experiences and things like that. So I think that strategic or just even a plan of what we want because we both have different values that we you know want to spend our money on and the things that we want for the kids and like coming together you know what are we on the same page for like og was saying like both of us don't want to pay all for all of college for our kids neither of us you know had college paid for ourselves so we're definitely not you know doing that for our kids you know we found value in working our way through that on our own so um but i think the system that I use in doing both of those roles is definitely communicated to my husband. I don't just do those in a vacuum. I always give the the talk to make sure he's paying attention. And I say, okay, this is a, if I die kind of thing you need to know, like this is the system that we're using. This is where everything's at. This is how you do it. So even though I might be doing a lot of those roles, he's able to step in and do those things. And he knows the plan. You're handling the minute to minute, but he knows every step of the, of the plan. Yeah. Now, if, if, if one of the two of you leaves the house with the credit card, right, and let's say there's something that comes up, how do you know what the parameters are around what is a good expense and what is not? Uh, I mean, for you, because you're in it minute by minute, right, and you know the numbers, it's probably easy for you going, yeah, I can't swipe for that. But for him, how, do, how are there checks and balances in your family for everybody else in the family? Well, I think the first thing is we've had those discussions, so we know this is the plan. And if you're going to deviate from it or take a hard left, probably going to need to have a discussion or a phone call about that. Um, But also making sure that he's aware of, you know, what we have and, you know, what's in the budget and what's not in the budget. And then if it's something that needs we need or want, then we're adjusting, okay, how are we going to get there? What do we need to change? What are those things we need to give up or adjust fire on in order to be able to accomplish that spending goal? But I think 
for us, we're big on communication. I think that comes from the military and us spending a lot of time apart with deployments is that we have always had to stay in constant communication about running our household kids, but also the money. Len, Len, in, in your family, if the honeybee handles that, how does she, same question, how do you guys handle it? If you leave with a credit card and you need new tires and you realize I'm right by the place. Now it's easy. You just, when you have financial freedom, you know, that kind of stuff, those are easy. But when you're first starting out, it's more difficult. I, you know, the most efficient way to determine what are real wants and what are real needs, you know, what's discretionary and what's truly non-discretionary. Do, when you do what we, I used to do, um, you know, I was always under the threat of a layoff in my job profession, always. So I was always, we were always having fire drills. And by always, I mean, maybe every other year we do a, what I call the, a layoff fire drill where we assumed that I was laid off. And then I, Maria had the spreadsheet and I had my, sp- the same spreadsheet. And I said, okay, there's our list of expenses. I want you to tell me which ones are going if I'm laid off tomorrow and the income stops go down that entire list of every expense in, in our spread. I mean, we have every penny is accounted for and we have it all laid out in, our, in that spreadsheet. I want you to go through every one of those things and you say which ones are absolutely, we are not cutting from the budget and I will do the same and then we will compare our answers. And it was really eye opening to see, you know, the differences between what she thought were absolutely non-negotiable uh, expenses versus what I thought were non-negotiable. And you, you come and you, you just talk it over and you come to, you eventually you come to a consensus of what the real non-discretion discretionary purchases are. So it's very, it's a very, it's eye opening and it, it's slightly stressful <laughs> at first, but I mean, it's, if you do it, handle it rationally before you're laid off, that's when I recommend you do it. It really helps uh, the relationship. But, oh, gee, this fire drill kind of thing that Len's talking about isn't just great for married people. I mean, if you're single, just going, what are my non-negotiables? What do I need? And running through that could save you a lot of pain if you end up laid off. It's funny that you call it a fire drill. We call them lifeboat drills, but it's it's kind of the same thing. And if you're working through it uh, uh, either together or separately, it's also a really good exercise for deciding what is the first order of business if something doesn't go your way. And that's, and that's really when people are going to make bad money decisions. It's, it's generally not when things are going awesome, right? It's, it's when the stress of all the other externalities happen when, when you go, oh, we just got to get out of stocks right now, you know, and you go, wait, hold on. That's not part of the plan. Don't do that yet. Right. Or, or we need to sell everything and move it to cash because I don't know what I'm going to need the money. It's like, well, if you've thought through this and you've done the exercise Len's talking about, now you go, well, no, our, our, our need number is this. We have this in the emergency fund, which we've calculated because of this exercise. So we have six months in order to sustain ourselves so we can make decisions over a six-month window, not Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock because I got laid off on the way out the door this week, and now I'm stressed out for the whole weekend, and I wake up on Monday and, 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 and do some irrational things that seem rational in the moment but are irrational in the long term. So- there's a lot of there's a lot of benefit in in pre gaming it. Your mind is very uh, uh, tricky. If if you've already if you've already experienced something, it's not as scary the second time. And your and your and your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality, right? You go on a roller coaster. You but we just I just took my boys to the, to Cedar Point in Sandusky, and uh, we watched all the videos, and it helped a little. But I bet it would. I bet it would help if I went a second time on some of them. You know, I'm not as brave as I once was. I don't think. But um, but you know, there there were a couple where I was like, this this one's gonna freak me out. And then you get to the top of the hill, you go over, you do the thing, you go, okay, I was safe. I didn't, you know, didn't throw up. I didn't. No one threw up on me. You know, it's like all all my all my biggest fears were were okay. They none of them materialized. And that's the same thing about you know working through these exercises. These fire drills or lifeboat drills is you get the opportunity to kind of experience it and then decide how to handle it. So God forbid it actually does happen. You're, no, you're, uh, you're replaying the scenario, not creating it for the first time. I love that. Thank you. How much time should people expect if they're just starting to think about being the CFO of the family uh, on CFO duties, on planning the budget, Lacey, about how much time, how much time should somebody really try to carve out to make sure that they're doing a good job of this? 
I would think you should do at least an hour a week where you kind of assess everything, make sure it's on track. There might be things that you have to look up until you have muscle memory. It's going to take longer to do something. The more you do it, you're going to be more efficient at it. So I would say an hour is manageable for people. Do you have a set time on your calendar, like set out? Not time, but on, on Fridays. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Where I try so to do things. For you, it has to happen on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And if it's not going to be able to happen on a Friday, then try to do that in advance. But I think L that's really important too to schedule things. Like if not, it's just going to get lost in the weeds. Len, what about you, in your house? Yeah, ours, it's the first of the month. Um, we make sure all the bill, everything's totaled up at, at the end of the month and the first of the month we do it. And it, it, nowadays it's like, it's like five minutes. It's a five minute conversation between, between me and the honeybee. But uh, when we were younger and just starting out, it was a longer conversation. There was a lot more, it was much more serious and drawn out because we hadn't figured things out yet. We were, you know, it's constantly refining process. It's not like you set it and forget it. You're constantly updating, changing goals. And, and those meetings would be, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour sometimes. So, I mean, but you like, but, but then she had stuff she was doing beyond that meeting. So do you like Lacey's an hour a week kind of expectation? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, I think that's reasonable and it goes fast. I mean, I, if you're doing this, what I call the CFO duties, the day to day, I mean, that, that takes time to get all that stuff and record it. And yeah, I'd, I'd say that's good. Yeah, Cheryl and I have our weekly money meeting that is capped at 20 minutes. Um, but Lacey, to your point, uh, when we first set out, we would always spill over like it was setting it up and now we can easily stay within 20 minutes, but almost like Len, you said, it's five minutes now, yeah. you know, well, you know, the older you get, it's hard to last a while, Joe. <laughs> There's a pill for that. <laughs> Does your budget meeting last more than four hours? <laughs> if so, so you get a serious problem. <laughs> That's good. This, this Call budget your meeting won't end. Financial professional, if your budget meeting lasts. OG, uh, uh, do you like that hour a week? Yeah, it's, it's funny that you guys are talking about this because I just I'm, I'm looking at a piece of paper here that I was writing down um, our kind of a budget cash flow, whatever you want to call it, has uh, gotten a little squirrely uh, this year for different reasons. So I just started kind of writing the, the big numbers down that I could kind of off the top of my head going, oh yeah, you know, well, there's house insurance. That's a number, you know, we pay for life insurance and, you know, wine and, you know, all this other, these big, these big ticket items. <laughs> I like how wine <laughs> makes the first four <laughs> bread. <laughs> food does not make utility bill doesn't but wine makes it wine did but um but to but to but to to Lacey's point if you don't if if you just go back every so often like it took a while to kind of sort through all this like okay i got to get out the credit card statements i've got to download it i need to categorize it and see you know cuz the way amex categorizes stuff is different than how we might do it so i'm sure know, they don't you, put wine way up there <laughs> well they do categorize it by I purchase amount and you go, huh? Wow. Number four on the list. Weird. Um, like should get a Christmas card from these people. But, but, but anyways, the, the point is, is that it's taken a lot longer because we don't do this. We just kind of let it, you know, let it, let it go away yeah. after a while. And, and now kind of going back to it is a much more arduous process of, of, you know, of kind of getting all that data back to what I was talking about at the beginning getting all that data and just going, all right, let's just level the playing field where all the bodies buried right this minute. I think it's and, an important point that OG makes Lacey that, that you're not going to get this right, right away. And I think you kind of alluded to this earlier too. Just be aware, everybody, all of our stackers listening to this, trying to set this up, you're going to, you're going to screw this up. Oh yeah. Nobody's perfect. Everybody like OG was saying, like sometimes it gets away from you. Things get busy, life, things change. Like we have kids now, they're starting to drive and um, different expenses for sports. Yeah, there's so many things that get added on that now we have to adjust our spending because of these things and um, and prepare for different things in the future. So I think that you do have to fine tune it over time. I think that's just really important. Like it will never be the same. Yeah. It will never be good. And I also want to touch on the timing too. Like if you know, you're in a relationship and you're trying to have these discussions and it's not a good time to just like 
right when somebody wakes up, like, let's dive into this right now. Like, let's get out all this paperwork. I really, this Such is my sweet moment. Pillow talk. <laughs> like my, hey, like I know my you cat, just woke up. Like but, my uh, cat Cooper, I wake up yesterday and he's staring at me with his face right in my face, like he's plotting my death. Like, don't do that. Yes, do you want to talk budget? Which yeah, I talk let's budget? talk about your spending <laughs> right now. Now that I have right, attention. That'd be good. Yeah, now that I have a captive audience. I do think setting a time and making it fun. I mean, I talk about this in Stacked, about if you don't make it fun, if you don't make it a little fun, or at least a little a little uh, lively, you know? I mean, we talked about this earlier. Pancakes or wine is generally, for Cheryl and I, uh, 20 minutes. And it was the pancakes or wine that that made it palatable when we began. And now it's just part of the joke. It's part of the fun. Coming up in the second half of this conversation, we're going to go into some of the tools you guys use that you recommend. We'll talk about maybe how some of these uh, meetings go that you have. I've noticed that uh, obviously all of our meetings are a little bit different the way that we handle these things. So we'll give people our best advice. But before we get to that, if you're new to the Stacky Benjamin show, you don't know that at the midway point of every Friday episode, we have this epic year long competition between our three contributors, OG, Len, and Paula Pant, who Lacey, you're sitting in for Paula today. So your team, Paula Pant. No and Lacey, that means uh, we've got some good news and some bad news for you. What's which one would you like? The good news. The good news is somehow, some way, Paula Pant, who is always perennially in last place, is tied for first with Len at 11 points, which means that you get to go second because Len won before Paula did. So, uh, so that's the bad news is you have to guess second, uh, more good news is OG who's won the last two years in a row is in last place with nine, but there is, there is other news there, which is OG's won the last two weeks in a row to close it from 11, 11, seven to 11, 11, nine. So is that going to continue? We're about to find out because Doug, you've got uh, today's trivia question. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I believe it's Labor Day weekend. I'll celebrate by throwing a cookout for my friends in Joe's mom's yard. You know, as long as she's not home. Last year was a total disaster. Who knew that hot dogs needed to be refrigerated ahead of time? Well, I'm thankful everyone escaped okay. And speaking of thanks, here's some history. Turns out we can all thank Grover Cleveland for the three-day weekend. Although, I guess we can't actually thank him because... You know, there's a pretty good chance he's dead by now. But not only was Cleveland the guy who signed the law that made Labor Day an official federal holiday, but he also was the only U.S. president to serve two non-consecutive terms. I guess he really was a big fan of taking a hard-earned break. To celebrate Labor Day, let's talk about labor in America. Throughout Cleveland's second go at the presidency and beyond, membership in labor unions rose steadily, peaking in the 1950s. Even this summer, hundreds of thousands of union members across the United States are currently on strike. The most well-known among those is probably the Writers Guild of America, which hit its 123rd day of striking today and whose membership includes roughly 20,000 television and film writers across the country. I bet that's about how many people got to see Whitesnake on their last tour of all the state fairs. <laughs> I knew Len would like that one. Today's trivia question is, <laughs> how long was the biggest labor strike in American history in terms of cumulative days off the job? I'll be back right after I finish transforming my bathtub into a giant cooler for the weekend. You, uh, you do refrigerate the beverages. Hey, I know some safety food rules. Uh, kind of. As long as we don't, uh, as long as we don't uh, reprise what happened last year, that was awful. I mean, Doug. good. There was a hospital nearby. I mean, just relax. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> just, just awful. Uh, Lacey's going second. Len, you've got first shot at this. The longest strike in terms of no, consecutive cum- days. No, no, this off is an important distinction, job. Joe. Cumulative days off. Cumulative worker days off the job. So. Length of the strike times the number of people striking. Yeah. Uh, wow. Oh. Yep. 
and I'll explain. Oh, so we got to take the number of people striking and then multiply times the number of so days. Total wow. Days, okay. Total well, that's very clever. Days off. It's a big number. It's bigger uh, than yeah, seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, wow. First, I got to think who, what, what uh, union would have gone on strike and then kind of estimate the number of people in that union. Mm -hmm. Then I have to take a stab at how many days they were off. Wow. Oh, yeah. Doug, you've outdone yourself this week. Um, boy, what would have been, what would, what, who's gone on strike for a long time? It's probably, I'm going to, is it a truckers? Is it the Teamsters? Could it? Uh, uh gosh. And you said the Writers Guild was like 14,000. I think that, Nice short term memory. Was I just said it was twenty thousand. There was like okay, twenty forty two seconds ago, Len. Jeez. Okay. Well, I'm old. First thing to go, you know, short term memory. Um, I don't know. Let's My, say the union. Are the first thing to go. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Oji. Um. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to say. Let's say the union. Uh, I don't know if it's a union of of. 100,000, and then they were off on strike for most strikes. Gosh, I can't imagine a strike lasting more than a, well, what the hey, maybe it did last. Let's say 10 months. So 10 months times 30 days is 300. Is that right? 3,000. No, 300 days. Hold on. 300. 300 times, what did I say? 100,000? Hundred thousand people, so that's three, and then all those zeros: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put the commas in. That wow! I don't know, man. This number seems unreasonable, but I'm going to say it because that's what I came up with: thirty million man hours, days. man days, man days, man days. Thirty million man days. Lacey, we've got uh, 30 million. I don't even know how to process. <laughs> that was my goal. Yeah, this is. He did say it was is, bigger than seven. This is Maybe the this wildest is question since how many tubs of popcorn does it take to fill the Empire State Building? I don't think we've had one like. I think it's a good Labor Day question, though. Because talking about. It is. I'm having to doing labor. labor right? I mean, for we heard answer. Len doing the Lamaze <laughs> method a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, breathe, breathe. Yes, I think this is just a stab in the dark. But I don't think that many people went on strike for that long. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to round down. I'm going to say, I just, it's a lot of pressure. I don't want to let Paula down. I just, I'm very nervous, very nervous. But I'm going to go with. Do you know million. what we're playing? Did you know what we're playing for, Lacey? It's really not that big of a deal. Oh, OG, it's a huge deal. Do you want to point it out? That trophy? <laughs> that? That you're pointing to your family. I was like, whoa. Yes. Stakes yes. We're playing for OG's three kids. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets to pay for their college? <laughs> All of a sudden, everybody's like, I think the number's two. I think it's two. <laughs> Dive, dive. <laughs> Especially since you're redoing your budget. I don't know that I want to win that. <laughs> All right. Yes, I'm going to go with 5 million. She goes with, f wow, we got 30 million and we've got 5 million, OG. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm with Len on this one. This is, uh, is going to be a big number. Um, I thought Teamsters, my dad was a truck driver. I was thinking um, auto workers. Feel, yeah, that'd have been another. Like, that's a good one too. I feel like they. I feel like the UAW was on strike for a really long time when I was a kid, because that's kind of sort of also related to where my family worked, and there was a lot of financial stress going on when I was really young. Um, I mean, what are there? Are there like a million UAW workers? There's, I feel is like there really. Is. Oh my I, freaking god! My <laughs> numbers like way low. Way low. I, I think. I think Judge there's Doug's saying million. no, there's, there's not, not a million, even a million but people I, working at Walmart, and they're the why largest. Why are you helping him, Doug? After, sorry, what? I don't know why. Because yeah. they are now. I'm know, saying what they were doing in the 80s and 70s. Bro. What are you doing? If you're going to help anybody, right. it would have been. I'd me. like you the best by far, Lacey. 
Listen, here's the deal. The number is greater than 30 million. So I'm just going to say 30 million and one. I, I feel like the right answer is probably somewhere in the 70 million, 70, 80 million range. So that's my unofficial answer. My official answer is 30 million and one. All right. We would love to tell you who is right between 5 million, 30 million, and 30 million and one. But <laughs> you're going to have to wait a minute. We'll be right back. Len, you started off this shindig by saying 30 million people. How are you feeling now? Uh, I just got Chelsea Brennan. No, I'm not feeling good. I think I think Josh is right. I think it's it's probably more. I, I had no idea there were unions with a million people in them, but you're, they probably were back in the day. Uh, you know, Josh could be right. OG could be right. One of the two. Uh, Lacey, you said five million. I'm not feeling great about it. Feeling a little weak, but I'm going to stand firm and see it through. We'll see. OG, you feeling as confident about your pick as it seems like everybody else is is uh, feeling? Uh, I I feel like um, I feel, I feel, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like I've won. Just I, I don't oh know why, goodness. but I feel just like being oh with God. all of us, you've already won. I just uh, yeah, I'd love to see if this is overconfidence, Doug. Uh, please tell me it's overconfidence. Who's our winner? Hey there, stackers. I'm makeshift cooler pioneer and maker of fine craft bathtub liquor, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. The biggest single union labor strike in U.S. history in terms of cumulative days off work took place when all 400,000 members of the United Mine Workers went on strike from April 1946 to December 1946 to demand a health plan for workers and retirees. So how many cumulative days off the job did that massive strike cause? OG quickly uses his calculator. Well, you know, I'm not going to just give you that answer. First, I've got to embarrass our contestants publicly by telling you how ridiculously far off their guesses were. So what was the biggest strike in U.S. history in terms of cumulative days off? Let's just say it this way. Lacey was off by a mere 65 Point four million. Lynn was off by forty point four million, and OG was off by like forty point three nine 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 million. OG's our winner because the answer is seventy point four million cumulative days off work. Unbelievable! Where did, where did I you say did. my you, right you answer? Almost was. nailed it. Lenny did the same thing Doc G did last week. Yeah, this is it. a this uh no, you can't take credit for nailing. If you're going to Chelsea Brennan, you get no credit for nailing any. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. No, no, no. That is uh and it so, is no. unbelievable how fast <laughs> this has become a game. All of a sudden just a couple weeks later after we've yeah. written OG off, it's now 11 yeah. 11 10. Amazing. Coming into September. Yeah, that's it's what, what it's you, the power. Man. Look, it's the power of the Chelsea Brennan. It is worth something. It oh, is going last, and he, he'll struggle again yes. once he's going yes. first. But you're right. Being yes. able to, it's hard being first. Being able to do that, it's not I'd easy. Have said, I would have said seventy million if you'd gone first. Yeah, yeah. And then well, I'd have said seven. Hey, then I'd have said what? seventy, sixty-nine, nine, 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 nine. And you would have still lost. And so. you would have lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seventy million, one, 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 one. Time for the second half of our show. Uh, the second half is brought to you by depositaccounts.com. Lacey, you know what happens when you go to depositaccounts.com? No, but I want you to tell me. Oh, I will. I <laughs> so She's will. Right there. <laughs> See, Good job, Lacey. You will find that you can compare more than 275,000 deposit rates from over 11,000 banks and credit unions all for free against each other. And you really, really might want to, as we record this, let me give you some of these rates. If you're in just the national average savings account, you're earning a whopping 0.43%. Woohoo! But if you're in the 1%, the top 1% average is 4.65% APY. CDs, top 1% is at 5.54 for a one-year CD. National average all the way down at 3.67. And money markets top 1%, 4.46% APY, while the national average is 0.74. Big move if you get up to the top 1%. Head to depositaccounts.com and uh, compare your deposit accounts. Let's get that money moving, people. Uh, speaking of getting moving, 
let's talk about, we talked a little bit about how much time I want to go into some of the tools that you, so Lacey, let's start with you for, for your budget tracking for your CFO duties. What are maybe, what's maybe your favorite tool of all that you use to get this thing going? Just Excel. Or Excel. Google, Google Simple Sheets. spreadsheet. Yep. Because also there's two of us. So I need to create a, a method that my husband will actually use. And if it's a complicated app or something that he just isn't into. So I think when you're looking at, because if you're looking at creating systems using a budgeting tool like Excel or an app or things like that, those are tools you're using in the system. So, but if two people are using it, you need to make sure that it's a tool that both of you are going to be willing to use and the other person's going to be willing to step in if you are incapacitated or not willing to perform your duties anymore. So I think um, I'm more into keeping it simple and easy for us to use. And that's, you know, what we've become accustomed to. Do you use any of the automation? I mean, I know Tiller Money automates your spreadsheet. So you use your spreadsheet, but then every day it, it, it puts the Look, new values in Joe, for you. She pretty much just like said that. it. She married yep. a chipmunk. He can't handle that level of complexity. So she has to keep it really simple. She can't use, she just said it. <laughs> Doug's, Doug's about to get a knock on his door. <laughs> saying, I will be sure to relay that. I was like, wow. Wow. I didn't say it. I'm reiterating what she said. <laughs> it needs to be simple. We can't use an app or anything. My husband needs to be able to understand it. Yeah. I think you're thinking caveman, not chipmunk. <laughs> I, I think that's the way all of our spouses talk about us behind our back, by the way. You should see I'm married to that Joe. Yeah. Len, uh, Len, what type of uh, – use any any apps, any uh, f- fun tools to get there? No, unfortunately, no. I, I, I Just like Lacey, we use the spreadsheet. Um, and I will, in defense of spreadsheets being simple, yes, they, they are simple to implement at the basic level. Um, but I, the beauty of them is they are truly – they are very powerful. And they are customizable to you to a level that – other apps, they, I'm sorry, they just can't be as custom. You can't customize them like a spreadsheet can be customized. And the beauty of, of these spreadsheets are um, over time, like after, well, I was using these before, way, way before in my career. But let's say you're just starting out and you're using them only for your personal finance management. Over time, you will become an expert if you want to. And you will discover all of the cool things that a spreadsheet can do. Uh, the, the spreadsheet I have now is, it, if I do say so myself, it's absolutely amazing. I have that thing. That thing tell, g- breaks out spending in pie charts, and I've got, you know, th- things tied to other things, and it's it's like it's just amazing what how powerful it is now after 27 years of continually upgrading it over time, slowly, and it's just amazing. Um, and I highly recommend it. I, I just think one, nothing can be. Uh, as customized more than that spreadsheet. I mean, you can design that thing to do so many things that I don't care what's what's out there. This, you can't beat a spreadsheet. But back there. to you for a second, Lacey, you know how many people in our community swear by programs like YNAB or maybe Every Dollar or, you know, I played with Cube Money. Uh, you guys don't use any of those systems. Have you tried any of those systems? Yes, I, I've tried, I think, Cube. I'm not sure which other ones, but to me, it's it's learning something new. And then that also requires my husband to learn that something new. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. I am not as skilled with Excel as Len is. So I will say mine's very basic. I don't understand Excel to its fullest. But then again, like I don't need to like it. what we're doing works. Um, and then also to some of those things that you have to pay for or there's temptation to pay for a higher threshold of whatever that product is. And I feel like, you know, keeping it simple with everything related to money is the best way to go about it because when it gets more complicated, it gets confusing, mistakes get made. And then also you actually have to do these things. You ha- you can't use tools that you're not comfortable with using or are easy so that when you sit down, you're ready to do it, not dreading using that tool that you, you've put your information into and then hoping that it's, it's going to reach your goal. Well, real quick yeah. before people say, well, Excel, it costs, you know, because now it's it's expensive if you pay for Excel a license every every year. Yeah. Get you can there's something out there called Apache Open Office. It is I virtually identical to Excel. 
virtually identical and it's absolutely free and it's open source and uh, that's what I use. So it works. It's identical and free. Oh, gee, uh, uh, it, either in your household or with with clients, you know, we see people use some of these cool uh, apps that are out there using any of those. I was just struck by what Len said in 27 short years, I could be an expert at Excel by uh, keeping track of all of my expenses and everything for for 27 years. Uh, sign me up. Well, it doesn't take you 27. No, no, no. It doesn't take you 27. You could be an expert in a year if you put, you know, it doesn't take 27 years to be an expert in Excel. You just, you know, but I'm just saying over time, the, the average person, they can a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And before they know it, they are an expert. Not it doesn't take 27 I mean, years. I think you're talking to, uh, I mean, Len, you're giving OG a lot of credit. You're saying <laughs> that every man would take a year. It would take me like 28 years. No, I mean... Yeah, from a um, from a budget standpoint in our family, it's just it's just really not a thing that we do. Um, we we try to keep track of kind of what the Amex bill is every month and are aware of that amount. I mean, we kind of take the Paula's approach, and she's not here to defend herself, but but kind of sort of the anti budget thing. It's like just put money where it needs to go, and then spend whatever the hell is left, and don't even care. Because because we know that from a goal standpoint, everything else is taken care of long term. And Although think, there's some big downsides to that. I don't want to like make that all sound like, you know, roses yeah. and sunshine that yeah. like, oh, I have no care in the world. I don't have to do 27 years of spreadsheets. The downside is that it can get out of hand. And that's kind of sort of the, you know, kind of, kind of sort of what's going on right now. And it's not really out of hand in a negative sense. It's just there's more stuff going on. He was talking about kids that are driving and that's where they just, you know, like all those other things are starting to creep up and, uh, and we're inside of two years now till, till Alex goes to school. So that'll be, you know, that's, you know, it's a very significant, uh, expense that's coming, you know, in 23 months from now, which just sounds mind boggling to say, but, but, um, you know, just being aware of that is one of the downsides of like going, eh, I'm just going to. I'll just save money. I'll do that thing. And then I can spend wherever I want. Yeah. There's some freedom there, but then with freedom comes great response. Well, and I think I look at, I look at OG, the stuff that Len talked about, the C CEO roles, really a lot of that is in a, in a business would be the really cool stuff. The CFO does like, as you know, the CFO can change what a quarterly report looks like to wall street just by knowing how to use that pen. Right. And, and so your ability to get to some of the bigger stuff, I think, becomes more difficult if you don't have that, that, that weekly cadence going. You know, the, yeah. if the little things find a way to take care of themselves, the big things then truly do get lost, um, which is why I like, I like taking the time. I want to ask uh, you guys one more question before we say goodbye. And that is, how much of this is about setting the time aside to either communicate or just get your ducks in a row versus actually writing out the budget. Um, so how much is actually technique versus actually being proactive and thinking about this? If you had to give it a percentage, you know, 60% communication and putting the time aside, 40% actually doing it or whatever it would be, where would you put those percentages, Lacey? I would say 80, 85, thinking about it and planning it and 20% you know, doing it. Um, yeah. I think it's like anything in life. You give it some more attention sometimes than you do other, like, you know, your weight, like you might have let yourself go a little bit, but you're like, all right, my clothes Too are a little lazy. tight. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> have you seen this? <laughs> of letting yourself go. <laughs> I know. Jeez. I've been working hard all I summer. I didn't get this V-shaped figure. Letting myself go with the bonbons. <laughs> yeah, you didn't no, get that donut no shaped No dad figure. bods here, just summer bods. Got it. Right. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, Lacey, continue. No, but sometimes you give things more attention. And when you give something more attention, the needle's going to move. So, you know, you're going to make things happen because you're putting your effort in that spot. And so a lot of times, 
you may have not made money the main focus, like you're getting focused on your health, you're getting focused on work, your career, your kids. And then it's like, all right, we need to get back on track with this. And so you're paying a lot more attention to it. So I think it just depends on where you're at and, you know, what the new goal is for for your money. It's just like OG says, uh, but, you know, the hardest part of working out is is lacing up your shoes, which is why he doesn't have any shoes. He just got rid of them all. Just cross. <laughs> That's right. Just cross. Sandals, <laughs> Len, how about, sandals and socks. <laughs> Len, what do you think those two percentages are for, have been for you guys between thinking about it, setting the time aside versus the actual doing it? Well, you got to, the doing it part, I, I'm, to me, I'm not going to minimize that that's important. You've got to do it. So, I mean, just setting something up like a YNAB or, or, or your spreadsheet or whatever, set it up first. And then that gives you some, a basis to, to uh, talk about things. Once you get it set up, yes, then I agree. The, the main, it's all, it's more conversation and discussion. Um, and, and then the, the tool will take care of itself after that. I mean, with your, with your inputs, but yeah, I think you have to set something up first and have a form of basis for like your conversation. And I think that makes the conversation more meaningful, um, even if it's some of the inputs are wrong or incorrect. I mean, it, it gives you a basis to something to start working around rather than just theoretically start talking about it and then doing the planning first. I, I, that's that's me, though. Yeah, no, I, I, um, uh, we have a new sponsor on the show, uh, Monarch Money, which is v very much a cool way to look at all this stuff. It is one of those shiny apps. As a guy who's played around with a lot of budget apps and actually likes having that stuff right in front of me, um, I, uh, I super like, uh, like those. But, um, but for, but, but so Len, what's been fun though about this new sponsor of ours? is I'm going back and resetting all the basic stuff up that I've already had in my other apps. And you're right, that process of just setting it up is giving me ideas and is giving me, yes. it's like putting stuff in my head as I go yes. through and, 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 uh, and, and work through some of these details that I already had, you know, elsewhere. Uh, OG, for you guys, uh, thinking about those two percentages? Well, um, Lacey's probably right, as always, you know, the, the time spent sharpening the saw versus cutting down the tree is, is, is you know, proportionate. I, I, I suspect that um, having the conversations about it and, and starting to put the structure in place is most important, you know. Um, the, the more time that you spend building out the system, the less time you have to spend implementing the system after you've got it running, you know? So what you were just talking about there, Joe, about like, Hey, I got to put all my stuff in there. I've got, yeah. I mean, if you're doing an app, right, you've got to use, get your credentials out and remember what bank is, is where, and you know, all these different things that, that just take time to do. But once it's there then it's in maintenance mode. Yeah. What you do with that information is probably more important. And I, and that's where the communication piece, the 80%, so much yeah. more, more important showing up for that meeting. I mean, how many people have, have told I, the huge number of people who told me, well, you know, I've got mint, so I'm good. I'm like, well, you, did you open mint? That's always a whole different story. It's not about having the app. It's about what you, what you do. I think that's a great place to leave this discussion guys. So that's, that's fantastic. I hope some people this holiday weekend take an hour and start setting up maybe better controls for their money. Cause as we saw early on, it can have a huge, make a huge difference. I can't believe $425 billion wasted but because we're not paying attention to stuff. Let's uh, find out what's going on where all you guys are. OG, big plans for this uh, Labor Day weekend? Uh, yeah, got some travel this week and then, um, and then uh, home on Sunday and Monday for, for, for Doug's party. Time. For Doug's party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Len, how about you, man? B b uh, what's going on at lenpenzo.com? And you got big plans this weekend? Uh, no, no plans. It's going to be a quiet, a quiet weekend for me. Um, Those are my favorite kind of plans, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I like them too. <laughs> yeah. uh, they're very, very nice, relaxing. Uh, sad. I'm not going to get out there and jump in the hustle and bustle. Um, I, you know what I'm going to do? I, I'm going to put on my website the, uh, my, the article I was talking about, my how I run my household yeah. like a business I'll, I'll for anybody who wants is interested and they can come see and I have it all spelled out. Everything's there and you can just, it's a real quick read 
and uh, you can reference uh, that. So beautiful, come on, fantastic. By. We're we're going to link to that. We'll link to the the tools we shared, and we'll link to the military money show on our show notes page at stackybenjamins.com. So, Lacey, thanks for hanging out with us again. Thanks for having me. It's always a good time. You, you guys have uh, big plans for the holiday weekend. Just grilling out. That's a that's I'm looking forward to that. Doug. Just chilling out, grilling out. Not with Doug. We like to keep things meat products, especially refrigerated. Did you leave Perfect. out like potato salad as well? That would be even worse with me. Yeah. Easy. So just likes coleslaw. No, don't. Do, we don't even need to go there. Yeah, way too soon. Uh, it's been what five years, and it's still going on and on. Uh, but what's what's coming up at the Military Money Show? I have something big coming. It will be announced my birthday weekend or birthday week. I do a big show on September fifteenth, so there is a big change coming for the Military Money Show, Ooh. and I'll be making the announcement then. Oh, can't wait. Yeah, you know, no, nobody, nobody listens to the show. You can give us a preview, just a little preview. No. Something no, big coming? <laughs> Lacey? Lacey's re-enlisting. <laughs> Only on Lacey's show, something big coming. <laughs> something big coming. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? I just saw Craig Morgan. <laughs> wait, what, what did he say? What the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> no Don't. Oh, I thought Lacey would. <laughs> As your legal advisor, Len, no I'm idea what's I'm happening right now. You to stop talking. Just uh, taking notes here. <laughs> yeah. No idea what's going on right now. I'm not sure where I was. But I'm making a, I'm making a big announcement about the military money show on September yes. 15th. So tune in. Yes. All right, that is going to do it for today. Uh, a lot of uh, takeaways there, Doug, but uh, what are our top three? Well, Joe, first, take some advice from Lacey Langford and don't let your money intimidate you. Set up systems, realize you won't get it right on day one, and set off. Second, if you get to choose between being the CFO and COO, always choose being the CFO. That way you can hide all the fishing and skiing gear purchases. You know, I mean, so I've heard. Like, guys talk in the, in the locker room. Anyway, but the big lesson? Wait till the day of your big holiday bash to turn your tub into a cooler. Otherwise, turns out you'll end up having to bathe in the kitchen sink one limit at a time. Like a little baby. Thanks to Lacey Langford for joining us today. You can find her podcast on the interweb. We'll also include links in our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com slash Excel expert in a year. Thanks also to OG for joining us today. Looking for good financial planning help? Head to stackingbenjamins.com slash OG for his calendar. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC, copyright 2023, and is created by Joe Salcihai. Our producer is Karen Repine. This show was written by Lisa Curry, who's also the host of the Long Story Long podcast, with help from me, Joe, and Doc G from the Earn and Invest podcast. Kevin Bailey helps us take a deeper dive into all the topics covered on each episode in our newsletter called The 201. You'll find the 411 on all things money at The 201. Just visit stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Wonder how beautiful we all are? Of course you'll never know if you don't check out our YouTube version of this show, engineered by Tina Eichenberg. Then you'll see once and for all that I'm the best thing that ever happened to this show. Once we bottle up all this goodness, we ship it to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart. Steve helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to chat with friends about the show later? Of course you do. Mom's friend Gertrude and Kate Youngkin are our social media coordinators, and Gertrude is the room mother in our Facebook group called The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. To join all the basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. Not only should you not take advice from these nerds, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we'll see you next time back here at the Stacking Benjamin Show.
Do you guys use Spotify? Yeah. What's amazing, what's amazing to me about Spotify already I like because of Discover Weekly. Uh, like every Tuesday they have music and it's either right on. It's like, hey, here's a bunch of songs we don't think you've heard before that we think you'd like. It's either spot on and I like them all or it just sucks from beginning to end. It's just horrible. But now they've taken this whole AI train that everybody's doing and they've got their, they got their Spotify DJ who talks directly to me. Listen to this. All right, you want to change it up? Let's do it. I got R.E.M., a few other artists in that zone. And so I just I just hit the wow. button. But, but if I don't, he'll come on like every three or four songs like a DJ does and say something like this. All right, let's move on to a mix of rock next. Radiohead leading the way. <laughs> like you've got your own personal DJ. <laughs> he leads. It is so cool. He leads off like every day going, hey, Joe, how's your Friday going so far? It's your so he does use your name. Joe. He uses your name. You like that teenage girl music? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks directly to me. Wow. Yeah, I had to play. I had to play a bunch of uh, male music for a while. Just well, you say know. that's me, Selena so Gomez. I, oh, she's yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm way into her music. Well, uh, well Selena <laughs> Chef's Kiss. Selena Gomez. Uh, uh, the new season Justin of Bieber, Murders Murders yeah, in the Building. I do so. not like that show. You guys. Uh, no, you of course you, you don't, because you do. everybody else likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't we, watched we it, watched but Cheryl loves it. Two episodes, and it just... And you know what? It it was a little bit like Marvelous Miss Maisel, where... Actually, I like that. I like the first two seasons of Marvelous Miss Maisel a lot. The last I the know. last season of Marvelous I Miss Maisel was in, amazing. In, in season three. But anyway, Murders in the Building, it feels very New York stagey Broadway. It just feels, you know, like that to me, and that's never been my thing. That's going to live in my memory. Broadway. You do it. Broadway. <laughs> Jazz hands. Jazz hands. But, 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 Lacey, to, by, uh, Lacey, by living in your memory, you mean, you mean in your nightmares. I'm just trying to find out what's going on with Len's, uh, Len's sleeves. Len's I'm, got I'm, sun's out, guns out going I'm on. Am I, sure am I scaring it, you? Am I scaring you? <laughs> no, I'm not scared of anything. I just, no, that's not the word. Nothing scary about it. It's just a little. Pulsing, maybe. <laughs> Enough. It's Enough. you know what? It's freaking hot out here, man. You Let don't me own air conditioning. <laughs> oh. To... Oh, I like to the vibe guy. you're putting out, Len. I like the vibe you're putting out. Oh, it's so hot. Thank you, Lacey. Ugh. Thank you. So <laughs> last week I was um, at the airport and uh, there's a guy that I do some business with there in, in his office. I was there and uh, and <laughs> he, job, he had a Doug. box of <laughs> he has a box of uh, he has a box of uh, peppermint bark. And for Christmas last year, he gave everybody that he, uh, every one of his clients, a box of William Sonoma peppermint bark. And I'm like, dude, what's, it's, it's August. What's going on here? And he goes, ah, oh, somebody had taken it. I go, well, I'm taking it. I'm ta it's August. Nobody's claimed it. I'm, they're my, it's mine. So I'm like, sweet. Threw to my backpack, took off uh, to go oh, do a no. thing. Oh, yeah. no. Took off to go <laughs> do a thing. It's in, my, cool. it's in my backpack. It's in, it's in, it's in the car. A a a Texas a aging Texas perfectly. <laughs> So, so I do my thing at, at, uh, at, at this, uh, uh, university that I had to go to anyways, do the, do the stuff, get back home late that night. And, and the wife asked how it was and, and, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's great. I'm like, oh, by the way, I got you something. And I reach <laughs> in my special. backpack, <laughs> I reach in my uh -oh. backpack and immediately recognize that this is, this tin is hot to the touch. <laughs> it's, I mean, I've been home for 30 minutes and I'm like, oh I got oh you a boy. tin full of poo. <laughs> so, so minty guess what, poo. Guess what happens <laughs> to a box of a tin of peppermint bark when it's 106 outside and you leave oh, it in your no. backpack? It turns oh. into a block of s yeah. sludge. It's just all blue. <laughs> put it in the freezer. Yeah. So now, so now I've got chunks of frozen peppermint bark. So I it's bet delicious. it's good. Yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's gonna break a tooth. But pass them over here. Your confidence. Pass them over here. Len, would it pass them over? Len, would it help your confidence if I said it scared me? Who I scared you? Yes, with your guns. my look. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna do that. You gotta Good. get a pump yeah, on you gotta before. Get vascular. You gotta get vascular before you get on here, man. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta pump out I some mean, reps. You did some of it. You shaved your arms, which is a good good effort, but. You know, uh, you're I see some open. You know, like you're thank, you, there. thank you for noticing. You you want to know what else is shaved? 